Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of Dentistry and More. So today's topic is Osteoradio Necrosis, which is coming in uh, oral pathology. So Osteoradio Necrosis, the name, it, name itself gives a clue, that is it is a necrosed bone due to radiation. The osteo means bone, radiation and a necrosed bone. So formation of a necrosed bone or a dead bone due to radiation. So let's get into the detail of osteoradionecrosis. So osteoradionecrosis, it is an inflammatory condition of bone that is osteomyelitis that occurs after the bone has been exposed to therapeutic doses of radiation which result in or followed by formation of a sequestrum or dead bone or a necrosed bone. So ultimately the irradiated areas becoming a dead bone after a particular etiology. So that is what osteoradionecrosis is. So etiology, the 50 gray doses causes irreversible damage that causes the bone hypocellular and hypovascular changes and the dental trauma or the dental extraction after radiation therapy will result in a dead bone formation. So after radiation there will be hypocellularity and hypovascularity in the bone. So over that if there is dental trauma or dental extraction so that will be a problem and ultimately it leads to a formation of a dead bone or a sequestrum. So what are the clinical features? It is most commonly seen in mandible rather than ma maxilla because of the uh, micro anatomy and less vasculature in mandible and loss of mucosal covering and there will be exposed bone. So this is most uh, striking features of osteoradonecrosis that is loss of mucosal covering and presence of exposed bone. Pain may or may not be present and there might be swelling and extra oral drainage and posterior part of mandible is more affected than the anterior part of mandible because in the posterior part of mandible the radiation is more commonly happening because of the tumors of uh, neck region or tumors of uh, thyroids tumors of salivary glands so, so various tumors are coming in that area so that is why posterior mandible is more commonly affected in uh, than the anterior mandibular region so anterior mandibular region is not uh, devoid of any tumors but most commonly um, the head and neck region uh, radiation is coming closer to the posterior mandible so it is most commonly seen in posterior part of mandible rather than the anterior part of mandible so the exposed bone becomes necrotic as a result of loss of vascularity from periosteum which result in sequestrum formation that is dead bone mm -hmm. so what are the radiographic features so there are early changes and later changes early changes there will be well defined area of bone resorption within the outer cortical plate of mandible in later changes the bone will be of a lytic sclerotic or mixed nature and there will be ill defined borders and there will be irregular widening of periodontal membrane space. So the differential diagnosis, the bone resorption stimulated by high levels of radiation. So but in that high level of radiation there will not be any exposed bone like osteoradionecrosis. So the exposed bone and loss of mucosal covering is a critical features of osteoradionecrosis and chronic osteomyelitis is another differential diagnosis. So how do we manage osteoradionecrosis? So osteoradionecrosis is uh, to an extent it is not a preventable condition because anyway in head and neck regions people has to uh, they have to undergo uh, radiation for the treatment of uh, malignancy so sometimes this is inevitable still management is based on conservative approach or radical approach in conservative approach it is done to maintain the integrity of inferior border of mandible uh, we 
as uh, administer antibiotics to control the infection and there will be cecostrectomy that is the dead bone will be removed that is a necrosed dead bone will be removed and also local debridement uh, will be done and to control the pain we use uh, we can use narcotic analgesics and proper hydration and nutrition should be supplemented and ultrasound therapy should be done and in radicular approach that is based on the hyperbaric oxygen therapy and local debridement and also the mouth rinsing so hyperbaric oxygen is a most critical treatment option of osteoradionecrosis uh, supplying uh, oxygen so it is uh, supplying 100 percentage oxygen at a 2 to 4 atmospheric pressure for 90 minutes sessions 5 days per week so that is a therapy regimen that is 100 percent oxygen 2 to 4 atmospheric pressure 40 minutes sorry 90 minutes 5 days per week so on a preventive side uh, we need to look for a pre irradiation care mouth rinsing salivary substitutes are also uh, some other options so osteoradio necrosis it's a, a small topic uh, which is the formation of a dead bone due to radiation therapy so just because of radiation uh, the dead bone is not actually formed it is because on the irradiated area or irradiated bone there will be trauma or extraction so that causes a formation of sequestrum so radiation is resulting in hypovascularity and hypocellularity so in this area if trauma happens or if extraction is happening so there will be chance of dead bone formation so that's all about osteoradionecrosis i'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more thank you mm -hmm.